We begin with breaking news coverage. A second earthquake has hit Turkey. Initial reports say it was a magnitude 7.6 earthquake centred in the southern city of Karaman Mararas. That's after an earlier quake killed more than 1,000 people across Turkey and Syria. Well, the shallow magnitude 7.8 shake was centred in Pazarshik. That's in southeastern Turkey. The tremor hit just after four in the morning, local time. It brought down hundreds of buildings in Turkey and Syria. As day broke, rescuers scrambled to find survivors. Those efforts are still ongoing. Well, in Turkey, more than 900 people are dead, and the death toll in Syria is above 560. Hospitals there are struggling to treat the injured. People in Cyprus and Le Lebanon have also felt the earthquake. Well, we have reporters in Istanbul and Beirut. We'll be speaking to them in just a few moments. But first, this report from Mohamed Val. The aftermath of one of the most powerful earthquakes to strike Turkey in years. Rescue workers digging through piles of debris in search of survivors. Scenes of destruction spread across at least 10 cities in southeastern Anatolia. Thousands of homes have been leveled. The death toll keeps rising and harsh winter weather is making rescue efforts more difficult. This is uh, the S4 level uh, disaster uh, announced by the AFAD, uh, Turkish uh, Disaster Authority. Uh, it means an, uh, it's international uh, disaster, international level disaster. Ankara is calling for international help. Rescue operations have already started and we are in contact with every concerned party in this regard. We have also received information of so many countries that are ready to help. We have requested medical supplies and medical equipment. Neighboring Syria has also been hit hard. The regions of Aleppo, Hama and Latakia among the worst affected. Civilian buildings have completely been destroyed due to an earthquake that hit the northwest of Syria around 4.30 in the morning. The situation is dire and catastrophic. Tens of buildings have fallen in the city of Salkin. There's a complete electrical blackout. It's really catastrophic. Everyone is on the streets. The buildings are either destroyed or barely holding here. Turkey sits on top of major seismic fault lines and is frequently shaken by earthquakes. About 18,000 people were killed in quakes that hit the northwest in 1999. With a history of such natural disasters, many are asking why the country hasn't been prepared. Turkey and Syria were the hardest hit, but the quake was also felt throughout eastern Mediterranean, including Lebanon, Cyprus, Palestine, Israel, and as far away as Egypt. Mohamed Val, Al Jazeera. Well, as you can see uh, from this map that uh, we're showing you, uh, the new uh, 7.6 uh, magnitude earthquake that struck uh, in the last half hour just north, that is the, uh, the, the large red dot right at the top of your screen there, um, just north of the initial earthquake, which is the aqua-coloured uh, large dot further um, south um, in Turkey. Well, for more on this, we're going to go to uh, Sinem Kosiolu, uh, who's monitoring developments uh, from Istanbul for us. Uh, Sinem, have we got any information about how much damage this, uh, this latest earthquake might have done? Well, the second earthquake, which happened in uh, Elbistan district of Kahramanmaraş, was also 7.6 magnitude, which is uh, nearly the same magnitude of the earthquake that happened early this morning. Uh, as so, uh, actually, Turkish televisions uh, were broadcasting on air when this earthquake happened minutes ago, less than half an hour ago, and there are reports as soon as this a second earthquake happened, some uh, buildings have also collapsed. Uh, since the morning, since the main earthquake happened, more than 100 uh, aftershocks took place in, in the area. And according to the reports, those aftershocks uh, are between 5 and 6.6 in magnitude, which are also uh, still uh, very strong earthquakes. And uh, as the aftershocks come along, uh, we are hearing more buildings being collapsed, leveled down uh, in the area, and people are getting uh, trapped uh, inside, uh, even though most of them are, have spent the night outside. Uh, this is the situation in the area. It, it is really dire and catastrophic in the area, and uh, rescue workers are trying to reach out to everyone. 
uh, and a Turkish president who spoke within the last one hour said that uh, NATO countries and other neighbor and friendly countries have offered uh, their helps to Turkey and some of them are sending a uh, team, some of them are sending uh, aid supplies uh, to help the Turkish rescue workers to, workers to deal uh, with this big uh, catastrophe that happened this morning. Okay, Sinem Kosioli, thank you very much uh, for that update. Well, earlier I spoke with our producer, Ahmed al Khatib, who is in Gaziantep, one of the worst affected areas. He explains what his family went through during the earthquake. We're going through one of the heaviest earthquakes that I've ever seen, and I think Turkey also seen. The, the situation was undescribable. I mean, like, you, you don't know what is going on, and you can feel that some of the earthquakes that I have been witnessed before it was like you feel the the, the windows you feel the the tv is shaking but at this time i felt the the wall is shaking the building the whole building was shaking it was like it's 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 massive like at the moment that we faced it i couldn't think of anything just to put my kids under the table and stay there until the earthquake gone and i was wishing at that moment to be a dream i didn't want it to be like uh, truly what's happening that's what we've seen i just wanted to be a dream i start to pray at that time to be a dream but it wasn't and after the earthquake just finished for a second we just picked what we can get and we moved outside and you can see the small tent that i had with me that i put my kids in it and my mother was just sitting next by the temperature is under zero it's undescribable that's what we have got seen some of the building was falling down in Gaziantep, in Adana, in Karaman Marash, and Chanili Urfa. And I've just received, like, a few hours ago that my uncle and his wife and his two children was just dead under one of the falling apartments in Atai, Antarctica. So far, they couldn't get them out of there, and we are still waiting just for their bodies to be out. Watching some so of the... miserable. Yeah. It's... Seeing some of the images come through um, from Gaziantep and uh, and the other regions that have been affected are, are just absolutely horrible. And it, um, it's amazing to see some of these brave uh, search and rescue uh, teams going through the rubble, especially uh, with the aftershocks that have been continuing. Can you give us a sense of what it is like? Because obviously some survivors uh, of previous earthquakes describe the aftershocks are just as bad, um, not because of the magnitude, exactly. but because of the psychological impact that it has on people that have survived the initial um, initial earthquake. How? What have exactly. they been like where, where you are? Exactly. As you said, the aftershocks, it, it's similar to the same first one. And after we left since 4.12, until now, we are just standing outside in the cold until the, some of the mosque was open. There are doors for people to be welcomed and sit inside in a warm condition. Many other people don't feel safe to be inside any building that you can see the whole street are filled with cars and people sitting inside it. I mean, the, 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 the aftershocks in each 10 to 5 minutes, that you can feel it. Sometimes it's coming so heavy that you can see, like, some of the, the, the items inside the, the mosque is shaking. The kids is start screaming. The, the, even the, the, the big and elderly people start screaming. Like, it's, it's undescribable. Like, I cannot, I cannot tell you that, and I can't film even they don't allow anyone to film because of this horrible situation. The Turkish president has addressed the nation. He assured the population that the government is doing all that it can to provide help. The Turkish Armed Forces and Emergency and Disaster Authority have been called to the affected areas. Our priority is to rescue those in need. 9,000 people are working now in the rescue efforts. In regards to international help and aid, we had contact with other countries in addition to NATO and the EU. There are 45 countries that have offered their help. Well, Russell Serta joins us live from Istanbul now. And uh, Russell, with elections later in the year, I mean, how politically important is it for the government there to react efficiently and quickly uh, to these large earthquakes? Well, just uh, in less than uh, three months, the government is going to have or face the election. And it's very much critical for the Turkish government now. So, and while going to the elections, 
the country is witnessing the second largest earthquake of the last 100 years. So the largest one happened in 1939 in the province of Erzinjan, and the one that happened today is the second largest of the last century. So it is quite critical. President Erdogan is going to face uh, one of the most difficult elections throughout his political career, and the polls shows that it is 50-50. So on the other hand, uh, the, the economy is definitely not doing well. The, the prices are going high the high the inflation is the annual inflation is around 80 percent and so we can say that to a certain extent he's losing the momentum in his political career but on the other hand it is an opportunity for the opposition parties in the country and the opposition leaders today they have released a joint statement saying that today is the day of the unity we should join the hands and try to heal the wounds of the nation so another critical aspect of this this, this earthquake is that many Many of the cities in the southeastern of Turkey that has been hit hardest are the Kurdish majority cities such as Diyarbakir, such as Adyaman and Shandurfa. So the Kurdish wars are going to play a very crucial role in the upcoming election in terms of determining who is going to win, who is going to be the next president of the country, and also which party or coalition is going to form the majority in the parliament. So we can say that it is this earthquake, this very a large earthquake, is coming in a very delicate time, both for the government and for the opposition, but, but above all, particularly for the people. Now we are not talking about tens or hundreds, we are talking about thousands of the, the lost lives and thousands of injured and also thousands of the buildings collapsed. And it is the mag not that only the magnitude is quite big, but also regarding the, the, the area, the geography that it covers, it is beyond the imagination. Ten cities, and many of these cities are the major cities. The city of uh, Adana has more than two million people. Urfa, Gaziantep, these cities have more than two million population. Um, on the other hand, Diyarbakir and uh, Malatya, they have more than one million people. So it is quite a very delicate time. The government says that they are mobilizing all the means, the capacity, the capability that the state has, and also the civil society is joining this uh, force, this rescue uh, force. But the aftershocks are quite, are quite big. And just while preparing for this live, we received the news that another earthquake, separate earthquake of 7.6 magnitude has hit the city of Marash. So it means that in less than 12 hours, the same city has been hit by two very big magnitude earthquakes now. OK, thank you so much. That is uh, Russell Suter for us, uh, live from Istanbul. Well, the White House has reacted to the earthquake. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan says the US is profoundly concerned, adding Washington stands ready to provide assistance. He said that President Biden has directed US aid and other federal government partners to assess response options to help those affected. And the US will continue to monitor the situation in coordination with the government of Turkey. Well, the EU is also sending rescue teams. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen says the bloc's members stand in full solidarity with the people of Turkey and Syria and will continue helping any way they can. Well, let's speak uh, to Zeyna Khoda now. She joins us uh, from Beirut. And uh, we've just heard that uh, the death toll in Syria is, is now uh, at least 371 people. Um, I mean, the, the aid from the EU and the US can't get to Syria fast enough, which has uh, been just as badly affected by this earthquake as Turkey, if not more so. Yes, Syria has been hit hard by this earthquake. The human toll, the death toll now in the hundreds, but many, many families remain missing, uh, trapped underneath the rubble. It's not clear if they are alive or not. There are appeals for emergency aid, international assistance. There are appeals for machinery, because especially in the opposition-controlled north, there are no state structures. In fact, it's civil defense volunteers who, some of them, are using their bare hands to dig through the rubble, them along with, with, with civilians. And it's not just that. In the opposition-controlled north, there's a lack of hospitals, there's a la lack of healthcare facilities, because uh, during the course of the war, more than 10 years, 
forces, artillery bombardment, airstrikes by the Syrian government destroyed or damaged many health facilities. So they're appealing for doctors, for medicine, for, for machinery, for food. This is an area, um, you know, witnessing a humanitarian crisis. The majority of the people are poor. Millions of them are displaced. So already there was an emergency situation on the ground. And it's not just that. You have the cold, a severe winter storm that is hitting the region as a whole, snow, rain. So people are working under very difficult circumstances to save whoever they can save. But that death toll continues to rise with calls for international assistance growing louder. Okay, Zainal Hodder, thank you so much uh, from Beirut.